Hi everyone, today I want to talk about hanging art. Art and photographs that are in your home are probably the most representative thing about who you are or who your family is. That might not be good grammar, but that's what came out. I will give some suggestions on my blog about things that I personally would gravitate to within different budgets, but it really should be something that you love and you respond to so that when you sit down and look at your house, you feel like you're surrounded by things you love and memories that you cherish. Yeah. There are some general tips and guidelines of how to hang art and what to do. And remember, every rule is meant to be broken. I like to break rules. So as you look at things, keep in mind this is just a framework. It's not a tried and true, absolutely have to do this. All right, right now the tripod is balancing on my bench, so it's on fabric, <laughs> so I'm hoping it doesn't fall over. Also, if my husband walks in, he'll kill me. So if, it, if I shut down real fast, that's why. This is what I wanted to show you. This is over my bed. It is a series of three pieces. The bed is rectangular, the wall space is rectangular, so the series is in a rectangular shape. Because of the height of my ceilings and the amount of space, I still chose a vertical frame. So it's a vertical frame, but the entire series goes in a horizontal shape. Does that make sense? This is a vertical shaped wall. So here is an example of where if you have a smaller shaped wall, you don't want to put one horizontal piece. It'll make the wall feel flat and it'll look awkward. So this is not where you would put your horizontal image of eight by 10 of your family. You want to do two stacked or one vertical piece. And you can do squares that are stacked. You can do verticals, you know, in a row. You could do horizontals, but it needs to be in a vertical formation. Does that make sense? Okay, when you are hanging it, the rough guideline is to do a series spaced out with two to three inches in between. Now, the exception to the rule is if you are working within a large space. So, this, without sounding rude, the scale of my house is pretty big, so I had a giant wall to fill. So I actually went five inches. But when you stand back and see the entire scale of the room, they're exactly right and kind of within proportion. The bottom should hang roughly six to 10 inches above your furniture. So I don't want you to go 25 feet, 25 inches above your furniture. You wanna think of it as having feet coming off the photograph that could rest on furniture. If it doesn't feel like it's attached, it's gonna look very detached and very open and on its own and not part of the cohesive look of the room. I have it a little bit above the headboard it's basically, if you were to consider the wall break it, broken into thirds from the ceiling all the way down, I would see it in three spaces. And this is about a third of the way up for the bottom and about two thirds of the way up for the top. Okay, now I'm gonna show you an example of what not to do. The general rule of thumb for hanging art is that you want everything at eye level. One of the biggest mistakes is that people hang it too high because they think eye level should be higher. For example, I'm 5'5 and my husband is 6'1. So when he hangs something, his eye level is very different than mine and it's even different than my sister's who's only five feet tall. So museums hang theirs, from what I can see on the internet, it's like 58 inches universally. So use it as a framework, but in general, look at 58 inches for the middle of the artwork, but then always step back and take a look to make sure that it looks like it's at the right size. Can you see how much distance there is between the bottom of the frame and all the way down to where the actual bottom of the tile is? I'm not talking about the border around the tile, I'm talking about the base of it. Yes, you could look at the base of the tile that's coming up around it, but even that is too high. Do you see how it doesn't really look all the way connected? Even with the vases reaching up higher, and those are some pretty large vases, it needs to come down a good three inches. And when I measure it, I might even 
make it four inches. Um, because it's on wallpaper, what I'm going to do, it's on a wire behind it. I just need to rewire it. I just need to give it more slack so that I can lower it about two or three inches and see what it looks like from there. But I haven't gotten around to it, okay? <laughs> Get to it another time. But it's good to show you that not everything in my house is hungry. Right. Okay, remember when I said rules were meant to be broken? Here's another example of that. Even though you should have fr frames hanging with the bottom anywhere between six to 10 inches, you have to consider what's gonna go underneath it. So in this particular space, it's actually hung at close to 14 inches above the table. But the reason why this works is because I have a frame that goes up high and then I have pieces of accessory that go up higher that make it feel more grounded. Another tip I've learned is to do what's called break the line, meaning you don't want your artwork to line up with the exact frame of your house. So, in this particular instance, so, come say hi. Come say hi. In this particular instance, you'll see that the You guys, you gotta say hi. I want you to notice that the artwork is not in line with anything else. It is either above your trim or below your trim. Do you see how the piece goes just above a little bit to add interest? You don't want it to be there, otherwise it'll make it feel short. So go higher and then also be sure to connect the bottom. So I actually have it at a true six inches above the mantle. Here's what I want you to do before you even go out and buy art. This is my favorite tip because I'm a visual person and it's taken me a long time to be able to see a room. Try and make your room as blank of a canvas as possible. Take down a lot of the accessories that you're not in love with. Take down the art that you're not in love with. Remove it, up, throw pillows, and get a clean, clean slate. Then I want you to take an image. This is the image of a house of one of my followers. I love, I love when people email me. Um, and she sent me these images of her home. She sent them in color, but to save on ink, I print them out in black and white, okay? And what I'm gonna do is draw on the images where I would put the art and how the shape of the art will transform the space. And then this is what it looks like afterwards. So from here, you can get an idea. Do you want a vertical piece? Do you want a horizontal piece? Do you want to do a wall gallery with throw pillows or a drapery, add more effect? And then um, from there, you go shopping. <laughs> yes. So if you have questions or feedback, please write me. And then I could probably do a question and answer video if you're looking at something going, I don't get it. Um, or if you want to send me examples through my email, it's kelly at bluegraygal.com. Send me images, send me questions, and I would love to try and answer them the best I can. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Happy shopping.